Hi, Gary Stearman, pleased to announce that Billy Crone is here again. It's going to be great. And when Billy Crone comes, we always have, uh, I guess, more information than we can possibly handle in a half hour. And, and so we better get started. You yep. are here uh, to talk about a new DVD, and yep. it has a rather interesting title. I'm going to yep. let you give us the title of this DVD. Yeah, well, it's simply entitled uh, The End of Humanity. Really? Uh, Genetic Manipulation and Transhumanism. And uh, yeah, it sounds kind of macabre, but that's what God warned would happen. Uh, and that, it's happening. Well, you're, and you're right. And that's the, the premise of that, Gary, of course, is this is not stuff that's in the far off future. This is not stuff that, uh, you know, maybe in somebody else's life. It's already taking place. The genetic modification community behind a group of people literally called transhumanists, who their words, not mine, say, our desire is to, on purpose, not just alter humanity and all of God's creation, we want to create, this is our goal, called a post-human species. Now, Gary, what's that mean? That means you're, in their words too, no longer human. Sounds crazy, sounds wild, but if, if I'm convinced, if God didn't intervene, and praise God, He will, He's coming back, Okay, but Amen. if you didn't intervene, guess what? You would have the end of humanity. I'm sure this is all just a quinky dink. No, it's not. It has everything to do with the scripture. This, believe it or not, as crazy as it sounds, uh, this movement to alter humanity, this is nothing new. If you read the scripture, Jesus told us, how do you know it's going to be close to his return? Uh, he said, it's going to be as it was in the days of Noah. In fact, I'll read that real quick to you. He says, uh, Matthew 24, 36, no one knows about that day or the hour, not even the angels in heaven nor the Son, but only the Father. But he tells you a sign it's getting close, his return. He says, 37, as it was in the days of Noah, so it will be at the coming of the Son of Man. For in the days before the flood, people were eating and drinking, marrying and giving in marriage up to the day that Noah entered the ark. And they knew nothing about what would happen until the flood came and took them all away. This is how it will be, not maybe, not might. This is how it will be, Jesus said, at the coming of the Son of Man. So Jesus, in essence, is saying you're going to see a repeat of the things that went on in Noah's day right before he gets ready to come back and basically squelch it and put it down. And so the question is, well, what happened? Well, he gives you one clue right there. Uh, and, you know, people were in the days of Noah eating and drinking, giving a marriage. They had this lackadaisical attitude towards the coming right. judgment of God because of sinful behavior. Uh, Peter reiterates that. He says in the last days, people are going to be, uh, it's going to be a, a scoffing society. And they're going to, oh, where's this coming? Whatever. And they're going to, you know, eat, drink, marry. It's not, we're going on in business as usual. Right? And, and so that's the first clue. So do we live in a scoffing society where people are mocking at us as Christians saying, hey, you better get saved. Jesus is coming back. God's judgment is going to be poured on this planet for seven years. Yeah, we're in that. In fact, you could say business is, as usual is the motto of our day. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, well, who cares what you do? Just guarantee yeah, just... that I got a entertainment and the economy's good. I don't care what's going on. Just right. eat, drink, marry. So we're there. But the other passage where you get more information, what else was going on in the days of Noah, of course, is Genesis 6. Genesis 6 tells us a second thing that was going on there. It said that man's thoughts were continually wicked, thinking evil all the time. So do we have a society where basically people are thinking evil all the time? Uh, yeah, and you think about the media that wants you to think these ways that's anti-God, anti-Jesus, anti, anti that's sin. So the thoughts of man is continually evil. And then we see that played out in people's behavior, right? Every week we say, man, yeah. more people got shot. Evil, I, can you believe? And then kids are now getting involved in murder and stuff. It's, people are so callous and brutal. Guess what? The second son of the days of Noah is here. But the third one that a lot of people read and just kind of skip over is there is, to use a, a term that I have, I don't know if this is an actual English word, maybe it's a, a, a crone word, I don't know what. I said, it, what was going on there was, the, the Bible's very clear, Genesis 6, there was fallen angels intermingling with the daughters of men, and they, were, they had an offspring called the Nephilim. So in essence, there was a hybridization, right. this is the word that I use, hybridization of mankind. Right? So that's three things. So we, we've got the scoffing society, the business as usual. We've got the people thinking continually evil all the time. But come on, do we really see 
mankind being hybridized out into a different type of creature like it was in the days of Noah as a sign that Jesus Christ is getting ready to come back? Yes. And by the way, if you look back to Sumerian, uh, Egyptian, Babylonian history, uh, look through those books and you'll see some pictures of, of wall carvings and statues, half animal, half human. I mean, everywhere you look in the old world, mm -hmm. there was, if you will, genetic uh, modification. Right. And a lot of people, they want to say, oh, that's just Greek mythology. That's just those. And, and I'm not saying every account. Uh, of Greek mythology and things of that nature where you're talking about chimeras, half humans, half right. animals and things, uh, as well as what? Giants. Giants. Mentioned throughout of Greek course. mythology and stuff. I'm not saying that they're like, thus saith the Lord is, is accurate and trustworthy as the scripture. No, of course not. However, I do believe, based on the scripture, that there may be elements of truth that are in there uh, that we need to pay attention to. Why is it that pretty much almost all cultures talk about giants uh, as a part of their uh, history. Uh, why is it of all things that they have, they talk about weird combinations of humans with animals? Well, because I right. think, Gary, that was Genesis 6 as part of that society. But the crazy thing is, Gary, it's not mythology anymore. It's actually being done. It's not coming. It's already being done. And that's what we update. If these guys are to have their way, uh, and if God didn't come back, praise God he is, but if he didn't, it would be the end of humanity. All of God's creation is being hybridized out, not even just humans. Plants, animals, insects, you name it. We're talking about, of course, plants. Plants have been uh, genetically modified for years and years and years. Yeah. Nobody uh, you know, has a second thought. Yeah. And it goes on and on and on from there, and you've cataloged all this and documented it. Well, if you also read the scripture, Leviticus 19 found this very interesting, uh, which is approximately about 900 years after the flood. Once again, if you read that, of all things, there's these in Leviticus, the do's and don'ts from God. And he talks about don't mix two different kinds of seeds together and don't mate two different kinds of animals together, right? And it's hmm. like, why would God have that of do's and don'ts don't basically start mixing and matching things? Right. Well, because that's part of what caused his judgment to happen the first time. And he's warning you, even after the first judgment, the flood, that don't do it again. And, and yet we're doing it again. What we're talking about, it's not the normal, you know, mix a plant here with another plant. This is being done on a genetic level. And so the byproduct is not original to the original one that God designed. It's not a, 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 a different one of a different type of corn. It's a type of corn that's never been here before. Because what they're doing is they're literally slicing and dicing uh, the uh, plants, animals, insects, and humans down to the genetic level uh, where they are turning them into something that's never been here before. It's, it's the, the original is going away. And not only is it going away, these are irreversible changes. Uh, and we, we document this, if people aren't familiar, there's a technology they've been using ever since 2012, it's called CRISPR. And CRISPR basically is the technology that gives them to literally go into the DNA strand and literally slice out one strand, pop it back together, or slice out, take one strand out, and take something from something else and pop in there and pop it back together. That's not like normal you know, uh, plants that you're trying to create a, a more hardy group of tomatoes. This is something that has never been here before in the history of mankind. And once you do it, Gary, you can't undo it. In fact, once you do it, it expands right. exponentially right. because you never know the effect of the changes. Well, and here's the deal. Once you start doing that, the problem is how do you keep it from infecting the rest of the genome in right. the plant kingdom, animal kingdom, kingdom. And let me give you a case in point. They even admit this. I'll just mention plants. Some of the freaky things that they're already doing with plants is uh, they want to make glow-in-the-dark plants and glow-in-the-dark trees. And you know why? Because, Gary, that's going to help save the planet. Because then we won't have to use electricity and fossil fuel to do street lights and whatever. We'll just create glow-in-the-dark plants. It sounds crazy, right? But another one they want to do, they want to uh, create plants that produce more wood and also absorb on a much higher percentage of carbon dioxide. It's like, so you want, now you want to alter our atmosphere? Last time I checked, it's finely tuned by God. We needed to breathe and stay alive. I don't want you producing plants that start to alter the atmosphere. And they even admit, well, we're a little concerned, especially with trees. They're called transgenic trees, right. not just crops. But be, because um, they're taller than normal plants, and that means they're pollen, they can disperse on a much wider level. And they even admit this. Uh, this could be very concerning because it could cross-pollinate and then begin to alter 
other plants, including, they, they mentioned this scenario, uh, plants, for, for instance, that bees pollinate, but then the bees get infected, and then the honey they produce gets infected, and then it goes inside us and we get infected, just from a tree. And it's not just trees, Gary. Pick any plant that you can possibly think of. In fact, we have uh, demonstrated uh, uh, reports, and this is from consumer reports. They even said basically um, pretty much every food item that we've tested in the, the typical grocery store scenario, at, from even thing from baby formula to veggie burgers to potato chips, things of that nature, snack foods, already contains genetically modified organisms, plants, uh, and things of that nature. Uh, and another report, this is from the University of Florida. They said that basically uh, every uh, plant that we've tested, that basically fruits and vegetables, they're already modified. We're already ingesting this as humans, and then the debate is, wait a second, if we ingest something that's genetically modified, will that genetically modify us? And the answer is yes. Wow. Let's pause at this point in time, and I want to tell you about our magazine. It's called The Prophecy Watcher. Every month it is absolutely packed with articles uh, on Bible prophecy and often contributions by Billy and many, many other uh, prophecy writers. Uh, let's uh, take a look at how you can get your own subscription. Each month, The Prophecy Watcher magazine arrives in thousands of mailboxes all around the world. Our newly expanded 48-page magazine features cutting-edge articles written by the top prophecy experts, writing about things that you may never hear about in church. Examine the giants of Genesis 6, the future wars prophesied for Israel, the rapture of the church, prophecies about the Antichrist and the tribulation, the rebuilt Jewish temple, the book of Revelation, transhumanism, artificial intelligence, and so much more. You can subscribe to the digital version of The Prophecy Watcher for $20 a year. Subscribe to the print version for $30 a year. Or for a very limited time, we're offering a lifetime subscription to either the digital for $100 or the print magazine for $150. It's the gift that just keeps on giving. Just call the toll-free number on the screen or visit our online bookstore at prophecywatchers.tv to take advantage of this limited time offer. Well, now back to Billy. And Billy, I had interrupted you at a critical moment because you've laid out the problem here. Mm -hmm. And even the problem of, of poisoning entire genomes yep. on the world's surface. Yeah. Where do, the, where do we go from here? Well, again, as, as unfortunate as it is, um, plants are not the only thing that we ingest, Gary, uh, and then has the potential to genetically modify us, whether we realize it or not or know it or not, or want it or not. Uh, it's being thrust upon us. Uh, but also animals, right? We eat plants, we also eat animals. Well, guess what? Unfortunately, the same thing's going on in the animal kingdom. Pick just about any animal that you ever think about eating, and it's not coming, it's already being done. Uh, I'm talking from whether it be your fish, Pick anything in the, in the sea, the sea cucumbers, every, everything you think, lobster, shrimp, it's all being genetically modified. Go back to the ones that are on the lamb. Uh, they're modifying uh, uh, chickens. Chickens, they want to make them featherless so that they don't overheat in these big things, uh, in the big places they keep them, whatever. Uh, but they're also modifying, get this, they're modifying them so that the me, there will be medicine inside the eggs when you eat the eggs. They call it pharmaceuticals, F-A-R-M, pharmaceuticals. I kid you not. So, so that, uh, and isn't that great? You, you thought you were just getting wow. an egg? No, you're getting your medicine. Well, what, what, the, oh. uh, the chicken farm yeah. is, is not what you think it is. Exactly. The same thing with pigs. They're messing with pigs on a, a massive scale. Pharmaceuticals and eggs. I can't get over that. Yeah. Uh, eggs. Yeah. Well, Absolutely one of the centerpieces of our diet. Right. Well, did you ask for that? I didn't ask for no. that. No. Are they telling you they're doing that? By and large, hardly anybody's heard of it, but they're doing it anyway. So we don't even know what, what we're ingesting. Oh, and by the way, uh, there's no real regulatory board over this, and the only information we have about this is what they choose to release, which is, I'm sure, filtered, unfortunately. Yeah. So, but then uh, uh, go back to pigs. We eat pigs. People like pork chops, like bacon. That's great. Fantastic. But guess what? Uh, they're making super muscly pigs and huge mass. They call them Franken-swine. I'm not joking. 
Uh, they're, you know, to save the environment, they're actually genetically modifying pigs so they don't produce as much gas to add to the atmosphere, and as, as crazy as that is. They're making low-fat pigs, uh, and which the last time I checked, that's part of the flavor, but anyway. Uh, but you know how they're getting them to be low-fat? They're mixing pig genes with rat genes. I don't want rat in my pig. Well, you're going to get it where you want it or not with these guys. Uh, they're also making uh, pigs produce more uh, uh, f fatty oils, uh, omega-3, right? And you're thinking, you go, everybody's you got to have that. So you know what they're doing? That they're, they're splicing genetically worm genes into pigs to make them create more. And it's like, w w leave it alone, right? Uh, and, and then, again, cows, they're doing hornless cows. They're doing cows that can tolerate heat. They're doing super cows. They're, doing, they're messing with that. Uh, again, pick anything we ingest, they're already doing. And not only that, this is, it, that's bad enough. Even our pets, uh, Gary, they're modifying. They're doing genetically modified dogs. They're doing genetically modified cats. Uh, the dogs, they're producing these super muscles. And, and then why? Because they're experimenting on the dogs because guess who's next? Humans. In fact, China is one of the ones on the forefront of this. We're doing it too, unfortunately, in the United States. China and South Korea are really far advanced. But China admitted the reason why they've been doing it for years and making super instant muscles on pigs is because humans are next. In fact, in the news right now, China has admitted, not coming, but they're already, their goal is we're going to create a super, a super race of super soldiers, right? They've been doing experiments on animals for years. Now it's time for humans. And that's where it's headed. Plants, animals, insects. Insects, pick an insect is being modified, Gary. Uh, mosquitoes, uh, uh, fruit flies, uh, uh, butterflies, or whatever. And then, then they're doing some pretty crazy things to them. They're introducing what's called uh, dominant lethals in them. And what that basically means is the mosquito uh, will be able to, uh, once it uh, contacts another mosquito, it's a, a lethal. And so it will kill that other mosquito. And think, well, that's great, the mosquitoes will kill each other. Last time I checked, Gary, mosquitoes don't just attack other mosquitoes. They attack animals. They attack people. It's like, <laughs> in fact, they've admitted they've already done this in South America. And they said, uh, we now have run into a problem. These mosquitoes are now escaping our creation that we've created. And they're becoming, quote, mutant mosquitoes. And they could be cause the death of millions of people. Well, surprise, surprise. Right. How could that happen? Well, exactly. And then, then you're going like, well, that's too bad for those people in South America. This year, Gary, they're releasing the same mutant mosquitoes in the United States of America. So it, it's crazy. And then uh, on top of that, so plants, animals, insects, not coming over here. They're genetically modifying babies. They're genetically modifying babies yeah. and, and turning them, and they even said, they, this is their word, uh, what they're producing is hybrid eggs. Then they're not only doing it with babies, Gary, they're doing it with humans, adults outside the womb, not coming already here as alternative therapies. It's gene, genetic modification for people with cancer, or HIV, and whatever. But these people are, it, they said it's going to alter the germline. And basically what that is is anybody, if that person, baby, adult, even survives these procedures, of being CRISPR, genetically modified, it's gonna forever alter the germline, meaning the progeny of anybody that comes out is not from the original. You're messing with the original. And then back to the chimera, the Greek mythology, it's not coming, Gary, it's already being done. They're combining man and animals together on a mega basis. And one of their rationales is not to cure diseases and blah, 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 but to cure the global organ donor crisis that's out there. And so for, and the, one of the common scenarios that they're doing is they're taking the genome of a person, like say they need a new heart, a heart transplant, right? And while they're taking the DNA from that person, they're putting it into a pig embryo. And so that when the pig grows up, okay, it doesn't just grow a heart, it grows a human heart inside that pig. And then they say, well, and, and on top of that, that'll be great because uh, then that's a custom uh, genetic heart custom to that person because it's their DNA, right. which means they don't have to have rejection of medication for their transplant. But they admit that, okay, that's the idea, that's what we're attempting to do, but they said, we sure hope it, the genetic structure stays there, and they admit, there's no guarantee that when you insert that human genetic structure into that pig embryo, that it's gonna stay just at the heart. It could go elsewhere, and this is their scenario. It could even go into and create a brain. 
So that, 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 that they said, that would be an ethical problem. What would we do if we have a pig that not only has a human heart, but a human brain? This is the kind of stuff they're messing with. And you wonder why God's coming back and going to put a stop to this? If these guys had their way, and isn't that just like Satan, Gary? Take mm. all of God's creation and twist it, contort it, and pervert it. Billy, I have to read what you read earlier, and that is uh, Matthew 24, 37. But as the days of Noah were, so shall also the coming of the Son of Man be. Right. Uh, that puts us right on the edge of the coming of the Son of Man. Exactly. Exactly. In, the, 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 in Matthew 24, the coming he's talking about is the second coming. The second coming is at the end of the seven-year tribulation, yes. Gary. We leave prior. We do. So we don't know the day nor hour, but man, that just means it's getting close. The it rapture's is. got to be getting close. Billy, uh, as you work on these studies, and they, they become more and more and more magnified and mm -hmm. more dynamic, if you will. I mean, we're not talking about tiny little lab studies anymore. We're talking about global studies mm -hmm. and actualities. How do you feel about all? How does it hit you? Well, I mean, it's very concerning. And I think we need to get equipped as Christians, not put our head in the sand so we can make biblical, logical uh, decisions uh, moving forward. Uh, but at the same time, Gary, it's just like any other prophecy sign. It's a prophecy sign. Just like what's going on with Israel should get us excited that, ooh, ooh hey, thanks for the news that Jesus Christ is getting ready to come back and get us. Uh, just like when you see the wars, the rumors of wars, the rise of famine, pestilence, and all that stuff, guess what? It translated for what it is. It's just news that Jesus Christ is coming back. This sounds creepy, but guess what? It's just another way for God to say, hey, don't forget, I'm coming back. Keep your head above, in, in the, in the, looking above, and not just on this earth. This earth will drag you down. So to me, I take it as a wonderful reminder, as wild as it is, from God, don't get bogged down with this earth. Don't just keep your focus here. Remember, I've saved you for something better, and one day I'm going to come back and get you before the hammer comes down on this planet. The DVD is called The End of Humanity. And, and what exactly is in this, very briefly? Briefly, again, we, we deal with the evidence and the biblical premise. Is this really happening? Is there, if, if God didn't come back, are we seeing signs of the end of humanity? And it's not even just the end of humanity. It's the end of all of God's creation. Again, plants, animals, insects, people, you name it. But we also expose, Gary, at the end, the people who were behind it. And the people who were behind it are called transhumanists. And they're not some fly-by-night group. These are the richest people on the planet. Uh, people like uh, Bill Gates, people like Elon Musk, people like Ray Kurzweil with Google, they're billionaires. They got the power of the ability. Politicians are involved in this around the world. So this isn't just like people in a smoke-filled room and have no power ability to create what they say is a post-human species. They're, they have the power, they have the ability, and Gary, they're already doing it. In fact, for uh, how we end it to bring it home is we're, we're also demonstrate. You might be sitting there going like, well, they're not going to CRISPR me. They're not going to genetically modify me. And really? We got Elon Musk on tape in a recent interview. And he admitted that with this genetic modification technology, uh, we can not only manipulate uh, mankind and reverse aging or stop aging, which is what they want to do for themselves. He says, we could even change you into a blank butterfly if we wanted to. Wow. On tape. Billy, I have to pause and, and let people know how they can get uh, their copy of The End of Humanity. There was a time not too long ago where the subjects discussed today were merely science fiction. Humans and animal DNA mixed together. Trees that glow in the dark. Weaponized insects. A pig with a human brain. Super soldiers who never get tired. But as shocking as these things may sound, they're all signs of the end times, prophesied in the Bible 2,000 years ago. God's judgments can't be far off as we see these bizarre genetic experiments destroy everything God created and called good. One thing is certain, it's going to get worse. Did you know that before Noah's flood, it had never rained on the earth? But suddenly, one day, the heavens and the fountains of the deep opened, and as the Bible says, God judged a wicked human race with a worldwide flood. Satan's genetic manipulation in Genesis 6 was behind the global flood that wiped out mankind. Billy's new DVD, The End of Humanity, Genetic Manipulation and Transhumanism, 
is now available for your gift of $25 or more to support the important work of Prophecy Watchers. We want to keep bringing you the latest research from guests like Pastor Billy Crone, who have a deep desire to bring as many people into God's kingdom as possible before God judges mankind once again. We've created a special package we're calling the Days of Noah Collection. It includes Billy's new DVD, The End of Humanity, his massive research project on 16 DVDs, hybrids, super soldiers, and the coming genetic apocalypse, and a free bonus book by Douglas Hamp, Corrupting the Image, a deep study into the Nephilim of Genesis chapter 6, the ultimate genetic modification and wicked plot of Satan. These three resources are available for your gift of $100 or more to Prophecy Watchers. And as always, shipping and handling is free anywhere in the USA. Just visit our online bookstore at prophecywatchers.com or call us toll-free 24-7 at the number on your screen. The Bible tells us all these things must happen before Jesus returns. Our mission is to inform people of the things to come and to make sure they have a personal relationship with Jesus. Are you prepared for what's coming in the days ahead? The days of Noah revisited. Nothing would please Satan more than to corrupt the genome of the men and women of earth, God's creation made in his image. There is a solution. Ask Jesus into your life today. He'll forgive you of your sins, prepare a place for you in heaven, and offer you the free gift of eternal life. The end of humanity is only the beginning for those of us who put our faith and trust in Jesus. God bless you. I don't know about you folks, but I, I, you know, I'm bowled over by this study uh, because, well, for two, two reasons. Number one, the gall of mankind to do this uh, in the face of God. Number two, the fright of knowing that this is happening right now yeah. and, and it's biblical. Biblical, and these guys tell you what they're doing. They don't use biblical terminology, but their terminology for this movement, Gary, is called the Great Reset. And a lot of us may be familiar with that terminology, yes. the Great Reset, and basically what they want to do is go to a cashless society and they control all the finances, which would lead towards a Mark of the Beast type system, Revelation 13. What I'm convinced, these same group of people, it's not just an economic reset, it's a human reset. And, and again, you're thinking, well, they ain't going to modify me. What, really? Part of what they're doing with the recent uh, activity that's going on uh, is they're not only using it as an excuse to go cashless and have us get used to having the government give us income, Revelation 13, but they're also, Gary, um, modifying people, and they don't even realize it. Your, your genome is being modified with the same technology that Elon Musk just said we could use to turn you into a butterfly if we want. So what's happening is our planet right now is being genetically modified on a global basis and people don't even realize it. I wish we could go on and on, but we're out of time. Uh, I, but listen, you need to see the DVD. Well produced, uh, packed with information. <sighs> Thanks for coming today. Thank you, Gary. May the Lord bless you in your work. Thank you, you too. I'm Gary Stearman. Hey, you keep watching. We are.